in the last lecture we learned what is a subject so we learned that a subject is a special type of observable that allow values to be multicasted to many observers and we understood subject with a use case so we learned that we can use this subject for cross component communication now many of you might say that we can also use an observable for that then what is the difference between an observable and a subject let's try to understand the difference in this lecture so basically a subject is multicast on the other hand an observable is unicast let's try to understand this with an example and for that let me first go ahead and let me create a new component inside this app component so i'll go ahead and i will open vs code built in terminal and let me clear the terminal here and let's create a new component and let's call this component subject so a new component has been created if i expand this app folder there we have this new folder called subject and in there we have our subject component let's go to html file of this subject component there i'll add a div in that div i'll simply add an h2 element and here i'll say subjects in rxjs and on this div let me simply add a css class let's call it container and let's add some css style on this div let's go to subject component dot css and there i'll simply add some margin and i'll add padding okay let's save the changes and now what i'll do is i'll go ahead and i'll use the selector of this subject component so the selector here is app subject let's copy this selector let's go to app component.html file so here we have app component.html there i will comment these two selectors and now let's use this app subject selector okay let's save the changes let me close the terminal here and let's also close this css file this app component.html and this subject component.html and i will only open subject component.ts okay let's save the changes let's go to the web page and this is how the web page looks okay now here we are not going to do anything in the ui everything we are going to do in console all right now let's go back to vs code and let's try to understand the difference between an observable and a subject so first of all what we are going to do is we are going to use ng on init lifecycle hook and inside this ng on init lifecycle hook we will create our observable or subject and we will subscribe to that and in order to use this ng on init lifecycle hook let's also go ahead and let's implement on init interface and to use this on init interface we also need to import it from angular slash co all right now inside this ng on init let's go ahead and let's create an observable so let me create a variable let's call it maybe obs you can name it anything and to this we are going to assign an observable for that we will use new keyword followed by observable constructor and in order to use this observable constructor we also need to import it from rxjs library now we have learned that to this observable constructor we need to pass a callback function and that callback function it is going to receive an observer as its argument so let's simply call it as observer and on that observer we can call next method to emit a data here let's say i want to emit a random value from this observable for that we can use the random method of math class so let's say math dot random and this random function it will generate a random number and we want to emit that random number from this observable this obs observable all right now let's say for this observable we have two subscribers so here we are going to create our first subscriber so we want to subscribe to this observable so here we will say observable dot subscribe to this subscribe method again we are going to pass a callback function which will be called whenever a new value will be emitted 
right so we are going to receive that new value as an argument to this callback function so let's simply call it as data and let's go ahead and let's log that data inside the body of this callback function let's do the same thing here so again i'll copy this and i'll paste it here so basically you can see we have two subscribers so whatever value this observable will emit since there are two subscribers both the subscribers should receive the same data right now if i save the changes if we go back to the web page you will notice that here two values are logged but these two values are completely different they are not same value and this is what observer does observer does not emit the same value to all its subscribers in all the cases in some cases it can emit the same value to all the subscribers but in this case where we are generating a random number using this math.random function this observer is not going to emit the same value for all its subscribers so this is how observable works it is unicast it does not emit the same value for all its subscribers now let's try to do the same thing with subject so let me comment this line now let's go ahead and let's create a subject so again i'll create a variable i'll call it maybe subject and to create a subject again we call the constructor of subject class and in order to use the subject class we need to import it from rxjs library and this subject constructor does not take any parameter now let's say for this subject also we have two subscribers so here we are going to subscribe to this subject all right and after we have subscribed to it let's also emit a value from this subject so for that on this subject we can call next method and from this next method again we are going to emit a random value so for that i'll copy this expression this math dot random function let's specify it here okay so since this subject has two subscribers whenever this subject will emit a value both the subscriber will get that value but this time both the subscriber will get the same value in case of observable we saw that both the subscriber were getting the different value but since we are using a subject and since it is multicast both the subscriber here will get the same value let's see that let's save the changes let's go back to the web page and now you will see that both the subscribers are getting the same value so this is what multicast and unicast is an observable it is a unicast so it does not always emit the same value for all its subscribers but a subject it is multicast it emits the same value for all its subscribers so depending on the use case you can use observable or you can use subject if you want to emit the same value for all your subscribers another difference between an observable and a subject is that an observable always provides a data so for example in this case it is going to emit some data but a subject it can also be a data provider as well as data consumer so in this example this subject it is emitting some data it is providing some data but it can also be a data consumer so a subject can also consume some data let's try to understand it with another example so here let me go ahead and let me comment all these code and in order to understand how we can use a subject like a data consumer we are going to make use of an api i am going to make use of random user api so let me go ahead and let me open that api so here we have this random user generator this is an api if i scroll down here we have the url for that api let me copy it and let me paste it here so you see this random user api it is returning us some data some json result okay so we are going to make use of this random user api basically we are going to make a get request to this api from our application for that we need to import ajax from rxjs slash ajax so let's first write that import statement because using this ajax we are going to make an http request so we need to import this ajax from rxjs slash ajax okay now in order to make the 
HTTP request. Here I'm going to write that code. Here we are going to make an AJAX call. So here we are going to make call to AJAX method and there we need to specify the API URL. So I've already copied that API URL and I have specified it here. And this AJAX, it is going to return us some data. Here we are basically making a GET request. Since we have not specified any HTTP method explicitly, by default, it will be a GET request. And this GET request, it is going to return us some data. Okay, let's simply call it as data. And this AJAX method, it is basically going to return us an observable. So if I hover over this AJAX method, as you can see, it is going to return us an observable, right? And we are storing that observable inside this data variable. And let's go ahead and let's subscribe to that observable. So this data is an observable. We want to subscribe to it. And whenever this data observable will emit a new data, we want to do something for that. We need to pass a callback function, the next callback function, which we have talked about. And this callback function is going to receive the data, which that observable is going to emit. Let's simply call it as response. Okay. And what we will do is, we'll go ahead and we will simply log that response. Okay. Now here we have only one subscriber. Let's go ahead and let's subscribe to that data observable two more times. So now we have three subscribers. Let's save the changes here and let's go to our application. And there you will see that there are three Ajax responses. Now here I'm not interested in the Ajax response. What I'm interested is in, let's go to network tab and there let's see what other requests have been made. So here you will notice there are three API calls which have been made. So to this random user API, since we have subscribed to this observable three times, the request has been made three times as you can see. So this is in case of observable. And the reason why this call has been made three times, because as we learned, an observable is unicast. So basically for each subscriber, it will make this Ajax call. For the first subscriber, it will make the Ajax call. Then for the second subscriber, it will make another Ajax call. And for the third subscriber, it will make another Ajax call. And that is what unicast means. But here, we don't want to make three Ajax calls to the same URL, because we know that we are going to get the same data, right? So we don't need to make an HTTP request each time there is a new subscriber. And we can solve this problem with the help of subject, because as we learned, subject is multicast. So a subject will give the same data to all its subscribers. So here, what I will do is I'll create a new subject. So again, I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it subject. You can name it anything. And to that, I'm going to assign a new instance of the subject class. For that, we are calling the constructor of the subject class. So here we have created the subject. Now here, instead of subscribing to this data observable, we are going to subscribe to this subject. Okay. Now currently this subject, it is not emitting any value. So after we have subscribed to that subject, what we will do is we will emit some value from this subject. And for that, what we can do is on this data, this observable. So this data is an observable, basically this observable the observable which this Ajax method will return, we are going to subscribe to that observable. And to that subscribe method, instead of passing a callback function, we are going to pass this subject. Okay. So now this subject, we are using it as a consumer. This subject, it is now not providing a value, but it is a consumer of that value. It is a consumer of the value which this Ajax method is going to return this Ajax observable. It is going to return. And now this subject will consume the data, which this observable will return. It will convert it into a subject and then it will pass the same data to all its subscribers. I hope it makes sense. So now if I save the changes and if you go to the web page, now in the network tab, you will see that the API call has been made only once. It is not three times the API call has been made only once and whatever result we will get, whatever response we will get, that same response will be sent to all the subscribers. So this is another difference between an observable and a subject. 
So I hope now the difference between an observable and a subject is clear to you. And now you understand when you should use a subject and when you should use an observable. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.